Welcome to Thriving with Nature, a podcast that gives you the tools you need to live a modern lifestyle that helps regenerate our planet. And now your host, Hayley Weatherburn. Welcome Thrivers to this week's podcast interview and if you're watching on YouTube, hello. Uh, I am here with the lovely Rob Dubois. Hello Rob. Hello. <laughs> Hi everyone. <laughs> Um, I met Rob actually at the Eco Lodge. If you've watched any of the past podcast interviews, uh, I met Rob through Norm up at the Eco Lodge. We were only a couple of weeks ago, I think. Only a couple of weeks ago, one of the most amazing places and inspirational places I've ever stayed. Yeah, it really, it really is. Um, and so the reason why I'm here with Rob is we are going to showcase his amazing house. Now, if there's ever a house that is designed to be thriving with nature. This is one of those houses. And so when he started telling me about what he was doing, I thought I need to have you on the podcast. I need to have, a, have you on the channel. And so yeah, today we're gonna to be talking about how you can have a modern home uh, and actually implement a lot of permaculture principles. So mm. Rob, how, does, how did it come about that you decided you wanted to go modern, but also keep that permaculture principle? Mm. In a nutshell, uh, Hayley, I um, did a permaculture course about two and a half years ago and it completely shifted my um, philosophy and approach to the building project and how I operated and contribute to the world. Yeah, yeah. And it, it actually, it was with um, Christian, right? Christian from Sumba, from Nungala. I'm not going to be able to say it right over in Sumba. <laughs> Nungankala, beautiful Nung Christian. Yeah, he's amazing. Hi, Christian, if you're watching. Um, yeah, you did one of his permaculture skills retreat over in Sumba. And I did, you were... I did, and it was facilitated by an amazing guy by the name of Mark Garrett. Mm -hmm. So a big hello to Mark if he's watching. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And so from there, because I remember you telling me you were so animated, you were just so excited to come. And had you already started this house by the time you were over there? Um, well, the whole project encompasses three houses. So two of the houses were already built, and we were literally at the final planning stages, and I came back and saw my beautiful uh, local uh, builder, who is also an architect and he's a dear, dear friend of mine. And I started talking to him about permaculture and what it was. And we had this great, deep philosophical discussion about Bali, about sustainable practices, about the future of Bali, how sad he was that the rice paddies were getting destroyed and including his culture. And I started describing to him permaculture and the principles of permaculture around caring for people caring for the planet and creating abundance. And he's like, okay, Bapa, he says to me, what do we have to do? And then we started, we modified what we could mm -hmm. within the context of, a, of the basic outline of the house already. Yeah, amazing. And so just for those that are listening, you're probably hearing a river. This house is, I definitely recommend, if you're listening on the podcast, come over to the YouTube channel to watch because I will be showing videos of where we're still in construction stage of this house. It's right on the river in Bali. It's opposite a beautiful rice field, which you'll see. Um, and so those, those permaculture practic practices, what were the things that you started to implement? How did, it, how, did it, how did you start changing what you were doing? Yeah, so one of the, the, the very first things we, we looked at was water and water usage. And people have this notion that Bali being in the tropics is full of water and we have this abundance of water, yet where we are is within 20 minutes there's villages that have actually run out of water in the drier seasons and then they have to get water trucked in. So this is, this, there's a variety of reasons which I won't go into why that occurs. Yeah. So one of the things that we did was um, we have a flat roof house concept, so we capture the rainwater off the roof. We did a calculation based on rainfall in previous years and we have the ability to capture up to 450,000 litres of rainwater annually um, based on previous rainfall. Um, the second area we're able to look at is obviously electricity. So we've added a certain amount of uh, solar panels which over uh, or monitor over 12 months and then I'll add um, ray, um, panels to that system um, to make it as efficient as it can be. So low impact water, low impact solar. Then we uh, address waste, and when, uh, waste is, is, I describe in two ways. One is wastewater. So we run um, the wastewater to what is called a vermiseptic system, which is a completely natural and biological mm -hmm. treatment system, which then runs through a garden. So the, the plants thrive, and they also add to the filtration process. And lastly, um, it then goes into the easiest way is a water treatment tank. So we have two of those, which will be a total of about 60,000 litres of water total, we have a totally separate water system for that. So all the gardens will be watered with um, organic or treated water. All the toilets will be flushed 
with organic and treated water. So by that way, we create a circular system and all we're doing is topping up those systems um, as and when needed um, with the current calculations once in the first year of operation. After that, we should be fully self-sustaining in terms of water. Yeah, that's, that's, that's absolutely amazing. And it's, it's not hard to do. You'll see um, some video clips if you're watching on YouTube of uh, the different systems. I mean, you showed me the different tanks for the vermi. Um, uh, vermi septic is what you call it. And for those who aren't familiar with vermi, vermi means worms. So worms cleaning out our poo, which I think is amazing. Um, really good book to read is called Human Manure. Um, that's a book to check out. But yeah, um, you wouldn't think, looking at this house, it's, it's one of those modern stunning houses and I can't wait to come back and I'm already inviting myself to the housewarming. Um, <laughs> um, when you, when this, this is one of those beautiful houses you see in the, in the, in the photos of um, come to Bali and stay in this luxury place, but you wouldn't think, oh my gosh, these principles have been implemented and you can see the different tanks you've used. You can see it's really well thought out with all the different water and where it's going. It's it's really, really amazing. And also with the energy, we were just talking about solar before. Um, yeah, so so water, electricity, was there anything else that you... Mm. So waste management. So one of the other aspects we'll, 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 we'll deal with is, is waste management. Now, Obviously, there's a movement called zero waste, and, uh, and, and for, from our perspective, that requires a lot of effort and a lot of will. So we're, we're more what I would describe as low waste. Yeah. So we will absolutely, we have a, what I call an organic wealth creation center, where we'll, we'll have seedlings, we'll separate our waste consciously through to plastics, you know, organics and, and, and inorganics. Um, we're creating a basically a, um, an underground uh, composting, worm composting system, which will literally be outside the kitchen, and that will um, then supply nutrients to a herb garden, which is literally, literally off the kitchen. Um, so I think one of the things is to make it sustainable and practical and easy to use, because if we don't make it easy to use, then people are just not going to use it, including us. So it's very much, and then a conscious um, uh, effort towards... Um, chemical free house mm. where because of course we're using the natural waste uh, system it will handle a little bit of inorganic uh, type uh, chemical but the intention again is, is um, reusable um, containers yep. uh, ideally glass or BP, BPA free and uh, you know natural and, and home oils and uh, yeah, yeah home created um, cleaning systems and essential oils and citrus citrus systems and stuff like that so a lot of that and then in then in concert with that is um, the planting of and I don't have a percentage but let's say most of the garden will produce food mm. so it'll be a combination of either uh, fruit and or vegetables you know through from citrus trees to to uh, papaya through to banana through to passion fruit and all sorts of different types of um, micro herbs mm. through to lettuce through to other you know root type vegetables so they will be all experimented with in within raised beds within the gravel garden system yep. and we'll experiment with those um, to work out what works the best yep. within the ecosystem we're creating with the house. Exactly, it is a process. You've got the concept, you've got the ideas and it's, it's constantly going to evolve. I absolutely love the idea that you've got with the kitchen and you, you lift up that window and there's your herbs and you've got your compost that goes straight in the vermi, into the vermi what did you call the vermi? Um, the sub, the, the was it the subterranean, sub subterranean uh, <laughs> worm composting system? Yeah. It's probably more a better word. For that I'm gonna I'm gonna go, go look at that. that myself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. No, that's amazing. And so, um, yeah, it's it's this is this is why I wanted to talk to you today is the fact that you can have a modern, thriving home and aligning with nature. We don't have to go and, and live out in the country. Some of us like to. In fact, I'm about to move out into the mountains myself. <laughs> but um, yeah, you, you, you can be living close to town in a beautiful modern home that you see the luxury resorts or luxury homes around the world and be contributing to regenerating the planet rather than than um, destroying it or, or, or being a drain on the, the energy of the planet. Um, is there anything else, anyone that wants to think about doing something like this that you would, any advice you'd give to them? Uh, you know, really, I think that it's really about the intention is really thinking very closely about what it is that you want to, how you want to live and where you want to live and what impact do you want? Because if you think about it in the most simple terms, you have a piece of land that's, let's 
So let's say 10,000, 10, 10 million years, let's use that. Mm. And then you put a big concrete structure or a timber structure or something structure, then you've covered that land from the, from the water getting into that land. Mm. So how can you consciously create systems to allow the water that would, has been there for millions of years, long before us and long after us, how can you allow that just to go back to where it originally started from? Exactly. So that's one simple basic thing. Another thing, for example, around conscious living, and we call it living consciously, is um, we don't have uh, any Wi-Fi in the house except for one very specific location. So all our uh, internet will be via hard wire or cable system. So we reduce, not eliminate, reduce the amount of Wi-Fi we have in the house. Again, this is around this notion of conscious living. We have, um, we're creating some amazing copper sculptures and copper features through the house. And those of you that, that um, know copper in and of itself has an intrinsic amazing healing vibration and, mm. and aura about it. So again, it's, it's about living consciously and uh, I would say low impact. And uh, the way I would describe what we're doing is it's an integrated approach. So, so as Haley so talked about, it, it is living in a beautiful, contemporary, minimalist, modern house sustainably, consciously with a low impact. Yeah, that's amazing. That's so inspiring. And so if you are thinking of building, just have a stop. I mean, Norm used to talk about it. It's, it's the design. Take the time to look at the design and how you can impact on those different things. Water, energy, waste. I mean, they're the first three things and then, you know, your own energy, bringing in food. Um, so, yeah, so, so check it out. Do, do your own research. Is there any, any particular people you look to or research that you found that you could um, recommend for people to look at? Um. Not so specifically. I think it's I think it's really educating yourself around permaculture. That yeah. that would be the first thing. Then obviously, if you're not a technical, I'm an engineer, so I'm I'm, I'm not a designer per se, but but I'm I'm creative and I'm heartfelt and I'm passionate. So so educate yourself around permaculture to begin with. Um, I feel that there is more and more movement towards um, people looking for that. Mm -hmm. And I think if you look, you will seek, you will find. There's a lot of groups. You've got obviously contact of Haley. Yep. I'm happy to offer any insights or, or uh, if you have any questions specifically. I have very much Bali specific information mm -hmm. that I could assist with. And you know, my desire and our intention is because we've built the two houses beside there with a lot of these principles is mine is to actually create the community mm. and create community minded process where we all reduce you know our uh, our impact on the earth and contribute yeah exactly. you know in a positive way and that's i mean that's um your business the the practice here in changu uh it's a how would you describe it so it's it's not just yoga it's mm -hmm. it's it's a bigger bigger vision can you explain the practice to people yeah, so, um, so about five, five minutes from here, we have a beautiful um, yoga studio that's mainly made of, um, of bamboo, and it's called the Practice Bali. And uh, we uh, follow one particular tradition. It's the Tantra, Tantra, Tantric Hatha uh, Yoga lineage, and that's the most purest form of yoga. It isn't something we made up or designed the name or it's some cool yoga moves. It's actually, it comes from the Yoga Sutras, which... 10,000 plus years ago and it's it's a modern interpretation but honoring the tradition so it's really for me and this house represents what our you know one of our taglines is yoga on and off the mat so mm. it's what I learned while doing yoga about myself and then applying what I've what I've learned about myself to something I'm passionate mm. about which is the environment and permaculture and community yeah amazing amazing you're living and breathing both on the mat and off the mat. I love that. Bravo. Um, yes. So if people wanted to contact you, they could probably find you through the practice. Thepractice.com, is it? Yep, www.thepracticebali.com uh, um, and just ask for Rob or to be contact, uh, contact Rob. Yeah, amazing. Thank you so much for your time and thank you for showing me around your absolutely magnificently beautiful home and I can't wait to see it with all the wall, the green walls and the, the gardens and, and the kitchen. I mean, I love a kitchen and having the garden right near that is going to be spectacular. So, And I'm actually even curious to see the, the, the vermicompost in action. Maybe I won't put my face in it, but <laughs> see how we go. But yeah, thank you so much and thank you everyone for watching, for, for listening on the podcast or if you're watching on YouTube don't forget to hit subscribe and uh, we'll see you again soon thank you thank you highly thank you everyone <laughs>
For more information, you can visit thrivingwithnature.com. See you next week.